Welcome everybody into our today's live. We are talking about how to attract the twin flame romance of your dreams. And today are joining us Danny and Christina, Arcia and Jenny, and my twin flame, Deborah and I, Paco. And I would like to start <clears throat> our life today with a question, with the question, what is romance? And if you have questions out there, please feel free to comment our, our live. We will answer your questions after we discussed the topic. So I would like to ask the round, what is, what is romance? What is romance for you? How, to what conclusion did you came on your journey? What is romance on the Twin Flame journey? Yeah, so for me, um, romance on the twin flame journey is about, uh, yeah, that love that I invest into myself and that space that I give to myself. If it's like lighting candles or buying myself flowers or going for a walk, it's really just about, um, yeah, like being with myself and connecting with God. And yeah, even like with my twin flame, it's not ever about him. It's just about me and God. So yeah, that's what I've learned on my twin flame journey about romance. Well, I have learned and feel like romance is really can be anything that gives you that feeling of falling in love, you know, falling in love with yourself, falling in love with God, falling in love with everything, including your twin flame. And it's, can be as simple as, you know, I'd really like to go for a walk today and you give that to yourself and you appreciate all of the sunshine, the things around you. Or it could be as elaborate as setting up this wonderful date for yourself that you wanna go on where you do all the things that you've dreamed of doing. And I feel like it's just so encompassing and that it can change and move from moment to moment. And it's honoring what's in your heart that makes you feel in love with life, that makes you feel alive, that makes you feel peaceful and happy and devoted and content. Yeah, so romance, according to me, you know, according to... Uh, earlier, the whole process was that, okay, how can I get it from outside of me, <laughs> right? This is what we are brought up with. So it was, um, you know, an eye opener when it came to uh, understanding what true romance is. And uh, that's what uh, Jeff and Shilia talks about in the course, the romance e-course. That's when I sort of aligned to the whole uh, process, the whole way of what divine romance is. And uh, coming from the Indian culture, I've heard Krishna romance himself called Ras Leela. Ras Leela is a state of divine romance throughout 24-7. So when I saw the course, I was like, this is what Jeff and Shilia is teaching. Ras Leela in a nutshell. And that's so easy and effortless. And all you have to do is romance with yourself. And it's, it's simple. It's as simple as that. And that's Ras Leela. It's been there. Uh, so, you know, it, it's sort of an eye opener for me that not to go outside of myself, but to give what I need. Uh, to feel loved is also part and process of romance. So, yeah. It's very beautiful. I resonated very much with, like Arcia said, it's effortless. I, I was not aware what true romance is until I came on my twin flame journey. I thought, mm -hmm. I don't need that, to be honest. I thought, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's not something I need in my life. I can go straight. I don't need that. And I realized life feels not really good. And true romance is not, is not something you create on the outside. True romance starts in my heart. There, there's a place in my heart I was completely ignoring. I didn't have a, a romantic relationship with myself. Mm. I, I completely numbed out to it. And I opened up this place inside of me with the e-course 
twin flame romance attraction. And the first course, the first lesson I watched, I was just crying because I, I missed this so much in myself and I didn't know that I, I, I desire to have this relationship with myself in such a loving way that I truly feel a good feeling about taking a walk, looking into the landscape. I love nature. I love loving myself and giving myself nature. And I needed to learn in my heart to have a relationship in a loving way that I feel in, that I fall in love with myself in, and to give myself, to nurture myself. Mm. That is how I learned what this means to romance. Yeah, I had kind of like a similar, but, but I don't know if it's a similar experience, but I, I shared this also in the webinar we had in the Spanish Open Forum a few days uh, ago. And for me, it was like the first time that I encountered this concept of like doing something with myself was when I broke up this, the longest relationship I had. And like the invitation I felt guided to explore was, okay, I, I kind of have to get used to doing things on my own, not, not waiting or whether I am in, in a relationship with someone to go to the movies and enjoy a, a, watching a, a film or something like that. And of course it was challenging, like, but it was very, a very nice experience. I actually enjoyed that very much. The missing piece was kind of like doing it, being fully present with what I was doing and, and taking that step because it makes sense to me and not because kind of like I was still trying to get something like Danny was saying from the outside. Um, so again, like when we, I started watching the, the Romance Attraction e-course, which by the way, everyone signing up for the free introductory ascension to me, like course you will get a 20 percent discount i highly suggest investing in this yeah. e-course it's very good in learning how to romance yourself what romance is mm -hmm. and how to cultivate this especially because uh, I, there's something that chef and Shalia share a lot also in the classes is that to have something with your twin flame first you have to cultivate it within yourself mm -hmm. so like that's a very, very nice stepping stone uh, on lead, our way into our union, but. It's perfect. That leads perfectly to our next question. But I wasn't finished. Yeah, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> that, that little last piece of, of my, my anecdote, it was, or my experience was exactly like when I started watching the e-course, I, I got clear like, oh, I can do something because it nourishes me, nurtures me, not because I am kind of like trying to get something from the experience itself and then say, okay, I did it, oh, it felt good. And then mm -hmm. on to the next thing. And that's what I, I liked. And I, I wasn't, but at this point, I wasn't like not waiting for him to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, if it feels good and I feel guided to, I will just give myself whatever I feel called to. Mm -hmm. The last thing was a, a little bouquet of flowers. Yep. So I'm not going to wait for him to give it to me. No, <laughs> I was like, okay, I feel good. I want the flowers. Huh? <laughs> like I Christina was, was, was sharing. Nice. I enjoy it too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Because every time I invest in something, it's also for the both of us. Yeah. But like Christina was saying, it's this relationship with yourself and with the divine or God or whoever wants, like, however we, we, we want to call it. So it feels really good and very peaceful and very grounded too, which was kind of like a very big difference from this previous experience a couple of years ago. Now I'm completely can go on. Perfect, thank you. And my second question is, why is romance important? Also important on the twin flame journey? Mm. For me, it's important because I learned with the course that um, it was the first time I really learned I don't get it from the outside. I can buy myself 10 flowers of bouquet or I can go for a whole month into nature. When I don't feel it in my heart, it, it, I, don't, I don't receive it fully. Mm. And I needed to learn first in my heart. And when I feel this in my heart, this, this peace, you were talking also this piece and I just kind of expand it from my heart into my reality. I, I receive it in so, you cannot explain how deep this um, romance feels then. And you, in, you need to learn that before you come together with your twin flame, because when you are not able to receive all this romance with your twin flame, kind of it overwhelms you. 
And with this course, I was able to learn that this comes first always in my heart. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh my God, I love, I love making a Lego. I buy myself sometimes for adults and I wrote myself with that because I, I feel so loved, but I need to heal this first in my heart that I allow myself to romance myself this way. And then at the beginning, I was sitting there and I kind of felt stressed in doing it because I was so numbing out in this place of my heart. And that's why it's so important that I realize I need to heal it in my heart. And this has something to do with my twin flame union because we, and when I love myself here and when I heal and let go of blocks in being in truth nice to myself and friendly and nurturing, it reflects automatically in my twin flame union. Totally. Yeah, I agree. Like at a very deep pattern of getting romance outside of myself, trying to constantly do that. And um, I'm learning right now how to love myself, how to truly like love myself in the deepest parts of me that need it. And um, like not just love myself in places that feel easier to love myself, but love myself in all places, every, every aspect of myself. And I feel like that honesty and transparency really helps to deepen romance and uh, cultivate that loving relationship. And um, yeah, I just. Yeah, and I think romance is important because for me, it's an aspect of like self-care. Yeah. Like taking care of yourself and like filling up your cup and making sure that you're feeling good and like feeling supported in your work. Because if you think about it, a lot of romantic activities that you can do are a form of self-care, right? Like going for a walk or like taking a bath. Mm -hmm. cooking yourself a nice meal, like a nice dinner. Like those are all like very romantic things, but they're also very like necessary. Nurturing nurturing for like self-care to like fill yourself up. And so, yeah, for me, that's why it's important. It's like part of your well-being, right? Part of like taking care of yourself and Mm -hmm. um, supporting yourself and always giving yourself what you need. So I think that yeah, like Jenny said earlier, there's no like limit to romance or mm-hmm. like romance can kind of be whatever you make it. Like it doesn't have to be this extravagant thing. Like you don't have to spend money on yourself, but you also can, right? It's just about where you're at, what you need. And yeah, like being honest with yourself and like, yeah. what do I need to like feel good and taken care of? Yeah. And the inner romance also just as a quick side note, it's really important as well when you're doing your life purpose work and serving, because if you're not properly filling yourself up or loving yourself or taking care of yourself by romancing yourself, you're not able to uh, give that gift to others. Yeah. And then, then you're taking and you're not loving. Yeah. And so, yeah, when you love yourself, you can love others and then you can expand that love in your life yeah beautiful and I also find that romance is important because I know for me it serves as motivation when when I'm hitting a challenge (laughs) I'm like and I just need that moment to remember what it's all for and when I connect to connect to the romance connect to that romantic love in my heart it helps remind me that, okay, this is what it's for. And that, yeah, I want this. <laughs> I want it this a lot. Remind me that, okay. And, and, and then also to really look back at how my relationship with romance has changed. Um, Cause I remember for such a long time, all these symbols of romance, like hearts or flowers, I was like, no. I don't want any of that. <laughs> no hearts, no flowers, you know, was kind of thing. But I realized on this journey that all of that, it wasn't a style preference. It was a block to romance. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed as I've healed that, now I'm like, give me all the hearts, hearts everywhere. I am getting my lifetime fill of hearts. <laughs> and it's such a freeing thing to realize how trapped I was by these hangups, by the blocks, by the fears, by, you know, everything that didn't work out in the past. And to realize that that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me at all. It just means that they weren't the right person. They were my twin flame and they were never going to work out. And 
giving myself that romance. I feel like that is essential for the twin flame journey because your twin flame is designed and created to be your romantic partner. Like it's a piece that is core to your twin flame relationship, what it's there, what it's there for, what it is and who you are. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> it was nice to listen to your process. So yeah, um, romance is important. Yes, it's undeniably important. However, we try to deny it. It is important because, um, you know, it's there in the basics of nature, basics of like, you know, the rain sound is romantic. It's just basics of human life. So yes, if you can't feel the romance, don't worry. It's just a block like what Jenny said, right? Uh, and you can heal through it. You can move through it through mirror exercise after walking through it with mirror exercise. Where is the romance blocked within you? Why is it that, you know, if you're giving yourself uh, a nice uh, walk, can you be fully present? Can you feel it fully? Can you? Does it make you uh, fulfilled? and happy and feel loved or romanced, right? So you can uh, try an activity and then see whether it works out for you. And if it doesn't, maybe it's a block and you could always work through it with mirror exercise. And in uh, Romance Attraction Co, Australia says one thing, that saying yes uh, to God, like when you breathe, you're saying yes to God, saying yes to romance. So that's that's romance too. When you when you can take a nice, beautiful breath, or even your regular breath is romance. So uh, yes, life is a perpetual romance, but of course you cannot reach it uh, now at this point. <laughs> That's why all that work you have to do. And every time I think we keep going deeper and deeper in further romance with ourselves, right? So. Yeah, it's an, an exercise. Like I was feeling into the responses everyone was sharing. And one of the keys is kind of like learning what what you feel is romance for you. And I remember Paco sharing this in the Spanish uh, webinar also. Like he had to, he could learn how he liked to be romance as a man, which might be completely different to what most of us divine feminines know. Maybe for him looks different. Maybe for him he's smoking a cigar every here and there, or drinking a little whiskey, or taking a walk in the park, just sitting with nature and having that relationship. Well, as for me, it's like you know, half of what he likes. Uh, not really. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's nice to see him enjoy it, of course, but it's it's not my thing. Okay. Or I was thinking like. There are moments where maybe our inner child is going to be asked to be romance in a certain way and can look very playful. Like, I know that I kind of like hit this place when I feel guided to paint or to color a mandala or something. I feel like a child again and, and kind of like the yummiest years of my childhood. I was like, mm, this is so cool. And I have my cup of tea and I have my, my little coloring book. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's just so juicy and like that's also a way of romancing it's just kind of like like um, uh, ah. Arsh I, I cannot pronounce your name again sorry Arshia Arshia thank you uh what's sharing is just kind of like open up and explore what feels good to you what, what makes sense to you where you're at mm -hmm. yeah and I think it's about like exploring that with no judgment like really accepting mm -hmm. yourself being honest with yourself. Like I remember um, I felt similar to Jenny. Like I had like a, a wall up to love cause I was just kind of hurt there. And for me, it was like unworthiness, like not feeling worthy of having that or feeling like that was for me. But I remember when I got romance attraction, I was just like, wow, this feels so good. And I went, I went crazy with it. And I remember I bought myself a pizza. I bought it like for Valentine's day. And I remember I bought like a pizza um, with heart shaped pepperoni on it. And I got myself flowers. Cheesiest oh thing ever. I know, but like, I did not care. I was having just like so much fun with it. 
And yeah, like when I did that, um, yeah, I felt like amazing, right? Like this is so freaking cute. Like it has like heart, I have hearts on my pizza. And then like that good feeling that I had within myself was being like reflected back to me in my external reality. And I think like that's the coolest thing when you um, really start embracing it and starting to go deeper into your romance with yourself is seeing that reflect back to you in your reality, like by other people, by like Mm -hmm. by nature, right? Like seeing a heart in the clouds, you know, like that's, Mm -hmm. that's something that you attract to yourself by like creating romance. So yeah, I think that it's really just about having fun with it and um, exploring with no judgment and just letting yourself like be cheesy, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I had the same. I was like, mm, no, I might be too like too girly. Or I, I also kind of like had this cynical stage during like, of course, like you get burned in certain relationships and you kind of like close yourself off. But that's the beauty, like with your twin flame. Actually, the the more you start cultivating this, even before coming into union, then you will see that reflected back because, of course, like your twin flame and you are one conscious, and like they are your perfect mirror. Whatever you are cultivating already within you, um, like it's gonna be shown back. And and sometimes this can be like, who doesn't dream of having those days and and having your man? And I, I speak as a divine feminine, of course, and having your man kind of like bring you flowers out of nowhere without you having to even give a hint or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and that happens, but it's also because it was already cultivated first. And it's a process, like, again, it's, it's a learning curve. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to, to be like, oh, you. Th- this is the, the manual. You get flowers, you get bonbons if you're a girl, and if you're a boy, you, where, what, what do men like? You go hunt. You, <laughs> you go, go hunt, hunt and then drink and fishing. fishing. <laughs> and <follow> fishing. <laughs> you get yourself a beer. <laughs> uh, no. Or even yeah. as a couple too. Like. Yeah, that's such a great point. And one of the things that that makes me feel is this uh, sense of with your twin flame, romance can be natural. You know, in other relationships, you kind of got to search out and figure out what they want, what they like. But with your twin flame, it's just the most natural thing that when you are romancing yourself and you are doing things that feel good and romantic to you, whether it's for yourself or each other, for your union, when you just follow your heart and follow what feels good inside, honestly, authentically, they're gonna feel that romance too. And you don't have to worry about if you're doing it wrong or not, because you can't do it wrong. You just can't, it's who you are. Just be who you are and that is gonna be really romantic. And highly attractive, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love when uh, you are nurturing your inner child, it feels very loving. And it's ex- ex- also the third question I have how can you attract romance with your twin flame? It's already what you shared, Deborah and Jenny. And <clears throat> I realized I experienced it too when I heal something inside of me. Mostly, like then he said, there are places you don't really like to look at. But when you look at it and you heal through it, then it came comes to naturally on the outside. Like I didn't know that I like <clears throat> now and then I'm smoking a cigar, but now and then it it feels good. It's kind of mm. I'm just sitting there and I'm with myself and then I'm enjoying the, doing that. I didn't know that it was a process. And it came from inside of me. Or I love our walks. In the past, I was like, oh my God, how boring. But I love it. Thank you. (laughs) That was the thought. But I love it. I was doing it always. You know, that's a really good point, Paco, because I used to think walks were boring too. But I think... um, it's like shifting from like focusing on your inner experience than like the outer experience. Cause if you're mm-hmm. focused on how it looks on the outside, then yeah, a walk may seem like a little uninteresting, but like if you're focusing on how you're feeling and like connecting with yourself and yeah, it's very grounding and like enjoyable. 
that's funny because I used to think that way about walks too but I think it's like a good point about like it's about how it makes you feel and exactly. not how it feels amazing I did it already alone before I met the I was going yeah you almost sure every day for a walk because it helped me so much and grounding me in the healing and just looking at nature and how it changes and this was a mm. Yeah, it was a little park nearby and had a small lake, but it was enough. I enjoyed very much that park was so the best and the worst of me. And if the summer was there, we had a hammock. Right, there were two, but oh, and I was like, mm. Mama loves a hammock. And that was also kind of like a way of romancing. It's just like, just there, chilling in nature. And we could be together having a talk or I could just be looking at the trees and kind of like having that inner conversation and it was perfect. Yeah, and I have a last question and it's very important because also Valentine's Day is not far. What do you do when your twin flame is not yet in your reality? When you don't know what they, what, who they are, where they are at. What do you do with romance? Uh, I will just wait until they block me. They unblock me okay. and they start writing to me. So you wait for, for them. Oh, that's what I did before meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> ah. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know. Uh, no, that's the funny, like, the, the funny thing. It's like the most interesting thing is after doing the, the romance attraction e course, I, e I started practicing that. When Valentine goes around the corner, I will, okay, Okay, what would I like to do uh, or what would I do if I was with my twin flame already mm -hmm. and I yeah. kind of like went with that and it felt yeah. really cool yeah that's what I did too like when um yeah when I was not with Danny at Valentine's Day um yeah I would just do like what I wanted to do or, like what I would want to do with my twin flame so yeah like um we're not limited by if her twin flame is with us or not Because we always can give ourselves like exactly what we want and like what we need. So I would say just follow your heart, do what feels good to you, do what like would bring you joy and make you feel love and romance. And um, yeah, like for me specifically, I'd buy myself flowers and like chocolate and just, you know, very like stereotypical Valentine's Day things. Because mm -hmm. yeah, again, it's like what feels good to you. But yeah, just like don't hold back with romancing yourself. That's Mm. Um, yeah. yeah yeah like live your life like christina said yeah, live as your if, life like your twin is there yeah as if you're already living with your twin flame and i'd say like the biggest thing is letting go of attachment and trying to get that romance from your twin flame and um feeling like like you know your twin flame or the relationship itself is going to give you the romance that you're seeking um and it's safe to let that go and it's really safe to um just love yourself and live the life that you would like to live that makes you feel good and makes you feel loved mm -hmm. and that will magnetize them also. that ma that magnetizes your twin flame because your twin flame is most magnetized to you and you are um cultivating that peace and love for yourself yeah, yeah. same, same yeah. thing you know, do what makes you happy, what makes you feel good, you know, ask yourself, I don't know, one thing you could even do is just like, well, what would I want to do if my twin flame was right here with me? What would I want to do? What would feel good? What would be fun? You know, let yourself have fun. Like that's, I think that's the big part of romancing yourself on Valentine's Day is just do whatever is fun. Do something that feels fun. And um, yeah, And actually do it. Don't just daydream about it, but go do the thing, you know, you're worth the effort it takes to go do it even by yourself, you know, just, yeah, have fun, play, love yourself up, give yourself all the attention, give yourself all the hugs and snuggles and touching and everything, just love yourself up, everything you need. Yeah, for uh, me, uh, what what I used to do or still practice at some level is that um, practice with God first, 
that, you know, okay, uh, I'd go for a coffee with God, I'd go for, so it's it's not like I'm missing the person, the missing goes off when I practice with God. And it's, it's more like, okay, so uh, today uh, I'm going to go have a coffee with God or have tea or have a, go for a spa with God, you know, it, it helps a lot like that because sometimes you're still triggered by the person, especially during Valentine's Day. Often all the triggers come up, especially if your twin flame is not around. So uh, for me, it has been a practice. So even when I went to uh, meet my twin flame for my reunion, uh, what happened is that I chose uh, that all the experiences I'm going to have is going to be with God. Like, so it was amazing. It was blissful always, all the time, you know, um, there, there is uh, that bliss when you involve the divine flow, the divine and I think she's frozen. Yeah. She will come back. Um, yeah, it's... Bye. I did that too. I went for dates with with God, and uh, I went also. Uh, I had a, a dinner. I went for a, a kind of date with myself. Mm. And I you are back again, Arstia. You were frozen. Oh. Please keep. Are we? Um, you were kind of in the middle of what you wanted to say. We yes. didn't hear it anymore. Uh, sorry, but that the internet is fluctuating. Yeah, it's so no problem. So, yeah, what I was saying is uh, choosing to do this with God, it's easier. It's like uh, just calling in that energy of love because when you invite the energy of love, it's easier to practice it. Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I have had uh, instances like, what am I doing alone here? So that feeling of loneliness needs to be healed. And, you know, enjoying your own company leads to your uh, union, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what Shilia had mentioned in one of the texts somewhere uh, in the open forum that it, it's, you know, enjoying your own company is, again, one of the main factors. So are you really able to enjoy it or are you just going to do it from a place of like, okay, let me do this, you know, like Deborah said in the beginning, right? Is it just for the temporary or do you really feel it? And is it really fulfilling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best dates I ever had when were, were exactly when I invited the divine, like you are sharing. Mm -hmm. And like that that was the, the funniest, most um, like cutest and amusing thing. I, I could be, I remember one of the last dates that I, I took uh, before this, like before the pandemic and like you were not able to go to the cinema and all that stuff was going to this coffee shop that I like very much. And it wasn't a time where I was like on a in a place to really like spend a lot of money, but I still felt guided to invest in going for a little coffee and a piece of cake. And then I was also uh, at that time working for I don't know, I was doing a translation or something for, for the community. And I remember like feeling that that nudge. I was like, mm, what about going to the movies? I was like, I don't feel like there's anything interesting. And I kind of like, you know, it's the remake of The Lion King. Mm, I watched it when I was a little girl. I had that kind of like impression of the old movie. I didn't want to touch. And there was like other options and none, none of them called to me. And I was kind of like having that conversation with the divine and I was just go watch The Lion King. Uh, I was not very convinced, like, like Christina and Jenny were sharing. I had to kind of work through my, my blocks there. And I remember like finally getting myself a ticket, going to watch the movie and sitting there kind of like by myself. And I was having a conversation with the divine through the movie. And I got like the best insights out of it. And I was like, oh, huh, this actually ended up being a pretty cool day. <laughs> Thank you. So it, it always, it's very rich experience when we do it from that place. And it's actually one of the lessons within the, the romance attraction e-course. It's like, if you, like, if you were to take yourself on a date, how, how would it look like? What would you do? Yeah, and choosing to do things with God really satisfies that longing that we have for that physical person. Because I know mm -hmm. that, like, a lot of people get hung up on like, well, I want like, I want him to be there. Like, I want to do it with him. 
but it's like realizing that what you desire from them being there is like the connection and the intimacy and you don't need them to experience that connection and it may sound like um inviting yourself to go on a date with god is like just saying that you're going with god and it's just a regular date but like when you make that conscious choice to be with God, like God really moves through your experience and he really moves through the people around you. And, um, and the experiences that you have, like you, Deb, um, having insights from the movie. Right. And so, yeah, it's like realizing when you make that choice to be with God, that it really does satisfy that longing for connection and intimacy. Yeah. Cause the truth is that it's God, that's your ultimate lover. And it's mm -hmm. your relationship with God as your ultimate lover that comes through your twin flame. And so it's not like the other way around. Right. So that relationship has to be cultivated with God primarily and put first. And then your twin flame will reflect that back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, I was going to say, and it's also important to really let go of any kind of resentments or you know things that are about if you don't have your twin flame next to you you know to really let go of that and so that you can open yourself up to experience the romance that is there for you in this moment right now no matter where mm -hmm. you are is around you or not. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely you were reminding me like a lot of times when I didn't even know who my twin flame was or I was moving through a false twin flame at the moment and nothing seemed to be moving with this person. I remember God was coming through one of my best friends in, in the city I was living. And that was like him inviting me over and just having dinner. And him saying, nah, you, you sit there and you don't do anything. But are you sure you don't want me to help? No, you just sit there and prepare. Like, and it wasn't like super fancy. It was just a couple of noodles with sauce. Mm -hmm. Nah. You take care of everyone every time, like now. And I didn't know that, but of course, like it was God and my twin flame being channeled through this person, even if this person had absolutely no idea that he was doing that. Yeah. Um, so like you were saying, I feel like that's a very important point. It's not like also like releasing expectations of, of how that experience is gonna manifest. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is that we see it time and time again in the communities everyone relaxes, do their thing, go where they feel guided. They're having a very nice time. And suddenly, oh, my twin friend wrote me. And, and it's not like you were even like waiting for it to happen. It kind of like naturally, casually, casually happened. Like, yeah, of course you were enjoying yourself. Why, why wouldn't your twin flame feel attracted to that? Like whenever I'm doing something that I like, he's like, what you doing? <laughs> Can I come sit here? Yeah, that sounds that's and, true. And Jeff shared the same thing. Like when uh, at the beginning of the relationship, when Shalia perhaps was reading a book and she was very much into it, he couldn't help but hey, what you doing? And this is extremely attractive for the divine masculine when the divine feminine just follows her good feeling and just does what she feels got to do and romance herself. As she's here in this place where she with God, <clears throat> this is like Christina and then she had highly attractive. Mm -hmm. And this is what I learned with the course. I have that inside of me. I don't need someone else. God is on God desires to love me and romance me. Even my twin flame is not yet there. He desired to love me and have a nice day. Just needed to heal through this block that was preventing me to realize it and feel it and receive it. And this is the coolest thing on earth that we we are so powerful that we don't need something from the outside. We can have it inside of us and then we manifest it mm -hmm. from such a peaceful place. And the equals is like, it's just the equals, you say. It's not the, just uh, the equals. It's something that gives so much to you because it's so peaceful. It's not wow so loud. Like we think everything has to be, it's peace. And it guides you to this place of peace where you feel peace in peace in your heart and romance, mm. true romance in your heart. That is wonderful. That's so wonderful. And I, I love everything you shared and your experiences and what you already cultivated with romance. 
with God that is very beautiful and very thankful for everything you shared. It's very helpful. Mm. And do we have comments? Comments, yes. Questions, not so much. But Cine Silvan is commenting, loving myself and taking myself to a date. Yeah. I'm going to movies and see Titanic. Oh, for <laughs> Why yeah. not? Yeah. That's one of also like super romantic. Yeah. And Nadia is, hi guys, wonderful discussion. Thank you. Thank you. you. Glad <laughs> you're enjoying it. Yeah, I'm happy to hear it too. Yeah. I feel uh, we could pull a card. Yeah, I was feeling huh? very, like I had here my yeah. my very light and funny knock knock oh, affirmators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. love and, rom and relationships. Yeah, like romance. Yeah, so I feel like since Valentine's is pretty much four days away, we can pull a couple of cards to kind of, oh, rest. And I will read because it's a lot of text. And I said it with a rhyme. I take a step away from my stress and then a deep breath and then a crankiness killing nap. When I get the rest I need, I instantly become a better version of myself able to navigate complex, complex relationships in a single bound. When I don't, I'm not, which means I shouldn't, but I try to. And then we can, and it doesn't, but I did. So it wasn't, ah, oh, good night. <laughs> and I, I feel like it, it speaks to this kind of like relaxing into the journey and not trying to uh, hold so much to those expectations. Like, of course, we understand the desire of being with our twin flame, We all had it. Uh, those who are on the journey to manifesting uh, or revealing their twin flame, they still have it. Like I didn't stop desiring my twin flame on a single day until I finally, like, until we finally revealed each other. But it doesn't have to be like, oh my God, this is so impossible. So like, uh. no, it can be easy. Just chill, relax. Or, There can be blocks to receiving, like we were talking at the beginning, like Daniel and Christina or Jenny were sharing, these blocks to receiving love. And that's okay. It's okay if you got hurt there. Give yourself the space to kind of like bring that nurturing, healing, like mm -hmm. rest and up. Something that gives back to you, something that replenishes you, something that kind of like builds that trust that love exists. <laughs> And that it is real and that you have that desire because God put it there and it's meant to become a reality, not just like daydreaming. So it's just like chill. Your union is guaranteed. You just have to do take the steps and heal whatever is upsetting or coming up. And like you will get your dream plane. Mm -hmm. So you can pull another one or I can pull another one. Like, uh, 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 yeah. We still got a little time. Maturity. You have to what, look, uh, show I, it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It's not like I can read and look at the car at the same time, but I know. It's this one, and it says, "I make peace with the th tough relationships of my past." Ooh. I probably would have skipped the pain they came with, but I'm grateful for the lessons they brought me. Oh, that is so perfect. Because of those tough relationships, I can look back at the mosaic of my life, internet stalk my exes, please don't do that, and see value in even the most broken pieces. I really dodged the bullet. Now you actually were kind of like moving through a lesson. And I remember like um, Shalia was sharing this, both the book and the, the course, the love list. It's kind of like getting clear on what your values in a relationship are, And what you are desiring on your ultimate lover. And like, I, mean, I remember doing mm -hmm. my first love list after this long relationship ended and saying, okay, I got a pretty clear idea of what I like and I, I don't like. And so I started writing everything down. Mm -hmm. And from there, like, it got polished. And of course, after doing the e course, I was kind of like sitting with it and getting even clearer. Just those relationships were lessons. They were teaching you something. And that's okay. We all got them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you said that, uh, what came up is that, you know, again, those relationships don't define you. Uh, those are just upsets and you can go there and heal that. 
and um, to relax the first card, right? Uh, to relax into yourself, there needs to be trust and faith, building that trust and faith within, because you are worthy of trust and faith within yourself. Like it's worth it's worth it to trust yourself. What what will you lose if you trust yourself? So nothing. Mm -hmm. So just a choice to trust yourself and relax within. So yes, uh, maybe this could be a general block towards romance, maybe in the consciousness that you're not able to relax mm -hmm. in the whole. So, uh, you know, to cultivate the trust and faith within and uh, relax and come into your romance this Valentine's Day. Yes. <laughs> Perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a couple questions coming in. Yeah. Um, do, do you want to read them? Oh, I'm okay. Sure, I'll, re I'll read the first one. <laughs> um, so Nadia said, those in union, did you feel something is happening right before physical union or was it an easy, another step into ascension? Mm -hmm. um, I guess like for me, um, no, I didn't like, I wasn't like anticipating it. I wasn't like feeling anything happening. I was, um, well, I don't know. I guess it's hard to say. Um, like I can share my experience. Yeah, I like, can share your experience. I felt very peaceful and happy with myself. Um, I felt very unattached to who my twin flame was or mm -hmm. when they were coming because it didn't matter because I was so happy and content with myself and God and just living my life and with no concern whatsoever about my twin mm -hmm. flame. And then my twin flame showed up. Yeah. And actually something that Jeff says, I think in a twin flame ascension school class is like, um, when your twin flame comes into your life, it's not like a big, like explosive and like high, we have this like anticipation of like, boom, he's going to be here and everything's going to change. But, um, he talks about how like, when you um, attain your union, it's very like peaceful and natural. And it's actually not exciting because um, you've matured to the point where like it's appropriate for you to have it. It's just uh, it's just like there now. And you're just like, oh, OK, you're here now. And then you're yeah. like, what? Where do we go now? And then you just work together. So it's very like um, what's the word like? It's just like it's very natural, like you've vibrationally yeah. attuned your consciousness so it's just like to the natural to the vibration yeah. of union and then harmonious union and so it's something that's very peaceful and almost just kind of makes sense and you're like oh okay yeah. well that makes sense okay let's go let's yeah. be together now you know it's very <laughs> nice but it's, yeah so that's and, that easy yeah yeah i remember like Definitely. having kind of like a little and a little i felt like there was something but i couldn't really predict the when and how and what I just it, it just fell around the corner yeah. but like Christina and Danny were sharing it was also kind of like the, the next natural step I was like okay I'm, I'm here minding my own business I trust that my, I will meet my twin flame at some point I just mm -hmm. keep going and one Saturday afternoon I felt the match was like hey how what, what about riding Paco and see if he's your twin flame and I was like okay <laughs> let's explore that <laughs> hey i just felt called to like do a, a video call or and, and, like explore if we are twin flames oh i was about to suggest the same oh, okay cool yeah. <laughs> That's the same, yeah. and we read each other's love list and, and it sounded That's like we easy. were describing the same person with different words and yeah. it kind of like came very clear mm -hmm. and yeah. then of course like it was a very natural step mm -hmm. after after yeah. that it was much like yeah okay that all makes sense that I go live with her. like I'm already thinking about going to Europe anyway so I'm not gonna make you come to Argentina where do you live Austria okay <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was like very very simple yeah it was not like this like Christina was saying like this wow movie like super exciting no it was very like the, like taking a breath, the most normal thing to yeah yeah yep. very peaceful at the corner. Yep. So another question or 
as we will complete. Yeah. Yeah. There is another question. It's um so sorry if I mispronounced your first name, but uh Lytal said, How do you actually heal the upsets? And I think that's an easy one for us to answer, like pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, you heal the upsets with something called the mirror exercise. It is um, the one tool you need mm -hmm. to purify your consciousness into harmonious union with your twin plane. Mm -hmm. And the mirror exercise is, uh, teaches you how to love yourself in places that you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because I saw that there was a conversation over this one going on in the, in the chat, mm -hmm. um, if you're having trouble moving forward from step two, three, four, um, please don't hesitate. Like, if you signed up to the free introductory course, you also have a fifty percent discount on your first introductory introductory session with an ascension with coach. an ascension coach from TFU, of course. Don't hesitate on trying it out. See how it's to work with a coach. It's very helpful to move through all four steps in the complete way particularly when we have to face something that is very uncomfortable and or very difficult for us to reach on our own. Mm -hmm. So you can book with any one of us if you feel uh, you resonated with any one of participating in the webinar. If not, we have a coaching match system. Anyone is also welcome to go through that system to be paired with an Ascension coach perfect for them and try it out. It really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Lethal. Thank you. <laughs> so, and yeah, I think those are all the questions. You can still pop them in the comments below and we can just answer them yeah. next, within the next few days, hours, minutes, yeah. seconds. seconds. <laughs> but yeah, we will drop also the, the link to the free course for whoever wants to subscribe and hasn't done yet. It was also very highly recommended. I am feeling complete over here. I don't know what yeah. is. Yeah. You feel complete too. <clears throat> yeah, thank you all again for what all you said to the topic and thank you for watching and for the wonderful questions. And we will see us in the next live next week. And when you're watching from YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. Wait. Bye.